for this video solution uh, to exam two, review problem number five. We're going to go ahead and start right in MATLAB because the very first question asks, uh, let DC equal K, so here's DC, write MATLAB commands to define the system as a transfer function object and to calculate the unit step response for the case where K is equal to four. Okay, so I told you I'm not expecting you know every detail about MATLAB, but I do want some basics. Like the very first thing you do is you define this transfer function object by establishing S as a continuous time um, trans, uh, continuous time system variable. Okay, then we're going to put in the the parameters of the system that we know. We we're given that K is equal to four. We know what DC is. We're given G, and so we write these things in and put those into MATLAB. So MATLAB displays the answer, here's G, and then we can define the closed loop transfer function. There's a number of ways we can do this, but this will work. Just put in, you know, algebraically what the transfer function is, and MATLAB reports back the answer. From there, you just calculate the step response. So this is the command I would expect you to see. So to summarize, what I would expect on an exam is these things to set up the system, all right, and then I would expect to see a command showing what the total closed loop transfer function is, and then also a command to say that we're putting in a step function. Okay, so it could be that I scale the step function. Let's talk about that. In the first case, I said the unit step, but what if it was two times u of t? Well, the only change would be you take the transfer function t and you multiply by two and then rerun this and you see the transfer function response is twice as high now. So uh, setting it back to one where we were, uh, you get the idea. This is how you handle uh, scaling the, the step input. Okay, now we can move to part B in in part B, we're looking at the steady state error for the case when the reference signal is a unit step. Okay, so we can look at this, and since DC is just equal to K, this is a type zero system. So we know it's gonna have a finite uh, constant steady state error, non-zero steady state error. Okay, so let's get started with that. What we know is that the transfer function for the error is 1 over 1 plus dg. Okay, where here's d and here's g. All right, and we can substitute those parameters in. And then we're want, wanting to calculate the steady state error. We've done this lots before. So we can do limit as s goes to 0 of s times the transfer function times the input. In this case, we're doing a unit step, so r is 1 over s. So we make that substitution, and these s's cancel. And so what, in fact, we're looking at is limit as s goes to 0 of the transfer function. And the transfer function for d is a k, and g is the um, 4 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. Okay, so we can let s go to 0, and when we do, we get 1 over 1 plus 4k, and then in the denominator, when I plug in s equals 0, I get 1 plus 4, which is 5, and so I could simplify this a little bit by multiplying top and bottom by 5, and I would get 5 over 5 plus 4k is the steady state error. Okay, so that's our answer for part B. Okay, and in part C, it's a type 0 system. So what is the steady state error for a type 0, zero system? <coughs> Excuse me when you have the reference signal as a ramp. 
well, a type zero system can't keep track of a ramp. And so, you know, here's our ramp reference signal and our system is trying to keep up, but it just can't keep the same slope. And so this error is growing uh, as time marches on. And so the steady state error in this case is infinite. We don't really need to do any further work because we know it's a type zero system. Okay, so that's part C. Next, in part D, we're looking at finding L of S for setting up a root locus. Okay, so to do that, we're going to need the closed loop transfer function. Okay, it's part D. So the closed loop transfer function is d times g over 1 plus dg, and we can quickly put that down. Um, g is 4 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared divided by 1 plus k 4 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And we can simplify that by multiplying the top, multiplying the top and the bottom by uh, this term. And when I do that, I get 4k over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 times k. All right, so I'm looking at the characteristic equation being s plus 1 squared plus 4 plus 4k. All right, so here is a of s, here is b of s. Okay, so I know that L is going to be the ratio of these two things. So it's 4, dropping off the k, right? It's really k times L of s. So I can put the k in and they would divide out. Okay. <clears throat> So 4 times L of S, um, so the B over the A, S plus 1 squared plus 4. All right, so that's our answer for part D. Okay, so from there, all right, the next question is to look at a sketch of the root locus for this system. Okay, so the root locus for this system, I would draw this axis, and I know that I can drop in the zeros. There's no zeros in this one, no finite zeros. And then I have a pole at negative one plus J2. So right here I have a pole and negative one minus J2. So I have poles here and here, and no zeros. No finite zeros. Okay, so from there, we know N is 2. We know we're going to have two branches. M is 0. All right, so I know that phi is going to be 180 over 2. So we have the angles being 90 and minus 90. Okay, so there's nothing along the real axis. This root locus is fairly straightforward to, to draw. From here, this is going to move, this pole is going to move towards 90 degrees, infinity towards 90 degrees, and then this is moving towards infinity at the angle minus 90 degrees. So there's our root locus. All right, so my thinking here is I would like you to be able to interpret this root locus. So if I was asking you about overshoot or asking you about stability, well, for stability, we know that it's stable because the poles are always going to be in the left half plane, no matter what the k values are. But as I increase k here, the, um, the angle of theta starts getting smaller and smaller, indicating more and more overshoot. So in that particular case, increasing k has no effect on improving.